Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time. You know, this is a very special weekend, the 4th of July weekend that we celebrate on Tuesday. And I want to read from our holiday book, Independence Day, July the 4th. The first Independence Day, long ago in 1776, was the birthday of our country because on that day, the Declaration of Independence was adopted by Congress. Our people under General George Washington were fighting the Revolutionary War, the war for independence. With faith and courage, they declared the United States a free and independent nation. Every year since then, on July the 4th, we have parades and fireworks and speeches about all the men who have helped make our country great. We sing the Star Spangled Banner, America the Beautiful, and other patriotic songs. And we have parties to show how glad we are that our people fought on to victory so that our nation is free and all our people are free too. The Liberty Bell rang out the news of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The bell is now kept in Independence Hall in Philadelphia where the Declaration was signed by the great men who led our country then. Yes, this is Independence, the 4th of July, from my holiday book. And now, boys and girls, I want to read you the story, the story of our American flag. And here, I happen to have a bookmark that is celebrating, and here is our American flag. And here on the front, I have a postage stamp because, you know, our postage stamps do honor our flag all the time. It was a sunny June morning in the year 1776. A soft breeze blew through the open window of a small sewing shop on Arch Street in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Betsy Ross, a young widow, sat in her shop, busily sewing on a covering for a chair. For the past year, the 13 colonies of America had been at war with England. Even though Philadelphia was just a small town in 1776, oh, it was a busy place. All day long, horses clopped back and forth on the cobblestone streets, pulling carriages and wagons. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door of the shop. Betsy Ross put down her sewing. She straightened her white cap that she wore on her head. And as she opened the door, her eyes grew wide in surprise. Standing outside were three men. One was Colonel George Ross, Betsy's uncle. One was Robert Morris, whom she had known since she was just a little girl. And the third man was very tall and had friendly blue eyes. It was General George Washington, the leader of the American army. Oh, Betsy curtsied as she invited the men and inside and took them into the tiny parlor in the back of her sewing room. Now there is something we would like you to do, said Colonel Ross, as General Washington unfolded a large sheet of paper could you make a flag like the one in this drawing, asked General Washington. Betsy looked at the picture of a flag with 13 stripes and 13 stars. I have never made a flag before, she said, but I will be glad to try. For a long time, I have wanted one flag for all of our colonies, said General Washington. Some men carry a rattlesnake flag. Men from Rhode Island carry a white flag with a blue anchor on it. Other men from the North have their own pine tree flag. Men from South Carolina have a blue banner with a silver crescent in it. Last year, a group of men decided that there should be just one flag for all the 13 colonies, said General Washington. Benjamin Franklin helped design the new flag. Oh, it was very beautiful, but it looked too much like the flag of England. You see, added General Washington, we want a flag of our very own, one that everyone will know is American. As soon as the men had gone, Betsy went to her cupboard. She brought out red, 
white and blue bunting. And then she studied the design and started to work. Very carefully, she sewed the red and white stripes together. Very, very carefully, she cut 13 white stars and sewed them in a circle on the field of blue. When evening came, she lit candles and went on working. Now, it was late when she went to bed, but early the next morning, she was hard at work again. That afternoon, when Colonel Ross and Robert Morris came to the shop, the flag was finished. Oh, it is beautiful, said Colonel Ross. You have done a good job, Betsy Ross, said Robert Morris. It is a flag that will make America proud. And it was a flag that made America proud. For a year later, on June the 14th, 1777, Congress voted to make the Stars and Stripes the national flag of America. Ever since then, June the 14th has been known as Flag Day. The Revolutionary War went on for many years. All during the war, Betsy Ross made flags for the Army and Navy. Other people made flags too, and the stars and stripes waved proudly over ships that sailed the ocean. Men from all the 13 colonies carried the stars and stripes in battles against the English. The Revolutionary War ended in 1783, and America did not belong to England anymore. The 13 colonies joined together and became a brand new nation called the United States of America. As America grew and each new state was added to the Union, a new star was added to the flag. But the 13 red and white stripes standing for the original colonies are still the same. There is a star for Delaware, the first state to join the Union. There is a star for Maine with its forest of pine trees. There is a star for Pennsylvania with its roaring steel mills and a star for Alabama with its wide fields of cotton, a star for Wisconsin on the shores of Lake Michigan, a star for Texas with its great herds of cattle, and a star for Colorado, the home of high mountains. For every state in the north, the south, the east, and the west, there is a star on, on the American flag. Now there are two more white stars on the field of blue. One is for Alaska in the faraway Northland. One is for Hawaii many miles away in the Pacific Ocean. If Betsy Ross were alive today, she would be proud of the flag with its 13 stripes and its 50 stars. Perhaps she would even be more proud than she was on that day in 1776 when she made a flag for America, when it was very, very young. And that, boys and girls, is the story of our flag. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment to read from our big Do You Know book. Please stay tuned. Thank you. 
And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read from our big Do You Know book. Do you know all about the 4th of July? Do you know the United States of America was born on July the 4th, 1776? Tuesday will be our country's 241st birthday. Do you know the United States celebrates on July the 4th, commemor commemorating the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? Do you know the Declaration of Independence was written by Thomas Jefferson? Do you know Thomas Jefferson died on July the 4th, 18 and 26, the 50th anniversary of the, of the nation that he helped conceive? Do you know on July the 4th, 1884, the United States received an important birthday gift from France, the Statue of Liberty? This is something many people don't know. Do you know the Statue of Liberty was built in Paris? The statue was then disassembled and packed into pieces in 214 wooden crates for shipment to the United States. Do you know that in the 1980s, the Statue of Liberty, after a very long fundraiser, had major repairs and the grand opening was held on October the 28th, 1986. Boys and girls, I want to show you this. Reading is a great gift to the mind and lift to the spirit. And that reminds me to remind you to please join the summer reading program at your public library. Any of the libraries in the Craven, Pamlico, Carteret Regional Library System. Yes, you can have fun reading and learning. All of you can learn that reading can be fun. And now stay tuned and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. And now, boys and girls, my bookmark shows me exactly where to turn, and it is the goddess of liberty herself. And you see, it sparkles, doesn't it? Like celebrating the 4th of July. The Goddess of Liberty. On a little island in the busy waters just off New York City stands the largest statue in the world. It is the Statue of Liberty. Many years ago, it was given to the people of the United States by the people of France to show that they were two great countries, our good friends. The statue is a giant woman who represents the spirit of liberty. Sometimes we call her the Goddess of Liberty. Oh, she wears an enormous robe, and on her head is a crown. In one hand, she holds a torch high in the air. A torch is a kind of lamp. The light from the torch shines far out over the sea and is a guide for ships and airplanes. In her other hand, <clears throat> she holds a stone tablet on which is written the birth date of a great nation, 
the United States of America. The date is July the 4th, 1776. Now, if you visited this famous statue, and many people do every day, you would go by boat to the island, and then you would go inside the base on which the statue stands. The base is called a pedestal. There you would get into an elevator. The elevator takes you up to the foot of the huge copper statue. Now you get out and start climbing the winding stairs that lead to the crown on the top of the goddess's head. Now if you count the stairs as you climb, you will count to 168. In the crown are many glass windows and room for 40 people to stand. Through the windows you can look out on New York Bay. The goddess has another set of steps that runs up the inside of her arm. It leads to the torch she holds aloft, and workmen go there to clean it and keep it lighted. The torch is large enough to hold 12 people. Everything about the goddess is huge. One of her fingers is eight feet long. That is as far as it is from the floor to the ceiling in most rooms. Her nose is four feet long. That is about as tall as most seven to eight year old boys. And her fingernails are larger than dinner plates. But wonderful as the Statue of Liberty is, even more wonderful is her meeting. It means that the United States people live in freedom and the lighted torch the goddess holds is a symbol of liberty shedding light on all the world. We often call New York Harbor, where the statue stands, the doorway to the United States because that is where many people coming from far across the ocean first arrived by boat. So we can say that the noble Statue of Liberty stands at the doorway, holding high her shining light, guiding travelers home and welcoming the strangers who come from other lands. Yes, that is a story of the Goddess of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, from Stories About America. And now, boys and girls, stay tuned, and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. And now, boys and girls, get very comfortable and ready to listen to the story, my little book about our flag. Have you ever thought about all the places where you have seen our flag? Maybe the first place you saw it was in a picture with the nursery rhyme about Yankee Doodle. Oh, you were only a little baby then. Now you are older and you have seen our flag in lots of places. One flag flies from the post office. There is a flag on the police station, on the fire station, and on the courthouse in the middle of town. The people who work in these places are there to help everyone who lives in your town. 
If you ever go to Washington, D.C., you will probably see more flags than you will see in any other city in the United States. That is because in so many Washington buildings, there are people who work for everybody in the United States. Those workers are part of our country's government. And sometimes our flag is seen in places that are not in the United States. Mountain climbers from our country often put up our flag when they have reached the top of a very high mountain in another country. Ships from the United States fly our flag wherever they are. There is even a United States flag on the moon. Our, our astronauts put it there. Maybe you have visited a museum and learned about Betsy Ross, who made one of our very first flags. At that long time ago, there were only 13 stars on our flag because there were only 13 states in our United States. A star has been added to our flag each time a new state has become one of the United States. When Missouri became a state, there were 24 stars in our flag, and now our flag has 50 stars. But the 13 red and white stripes on it keeps us reminded of the 13 states that started our country. Probably the smallest flag you have ever seen is the one on some of the letters that come to our house. Do you suppose one of your birthday cards will have a flag on it? Great big flags can be made of red, white, and blue flowers. Whether it is big or little, our flag helps us to remember what a wonderful country we live in. It's fun to go to ball games, isn't it? Whether it's a baseball game or a football game or some other sports event, we do we do not yell or even talk while our flag is being raised. We sing the Star Spangled Banner or maybe we listen while someone else sings it. Sometimes we say the Pledge of Allegiance. On the 4th of July, we go to see the big parade. How many flags will you count in the next parade where you live? Boys and girls, here is our flag, and here are the fireworks on the 4th of July. And now I would like to read you the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, boys and girls, I have a little story here about the 4th of July and about the ch a couple of children that we have met before on Tell a Story Time. And this is entitled, The 4th of July. Boomity, boomity, bang. Hooray, shouts Peter. A 4th of July parade. Peter and Mary see men in uniform swing around the corner carrying a big American flag. Then the band and marching soldiers and a policeman on high stepping horses. In the afternoon, Mary and Peter go with their parents to a sandy beach by a little blue river. Mary and Peter swim and splash in the, in the river. They build sand castles and look for colored pebbles to take home. Then their fathers build a crackling fire and their mothers fix supper. They have juicy hamburgers and buns and corn on the cob and great slices of watermelon. They even, have, they even then toast marshmallows. Now it is dark. Peter's father gets out some sparklers and lights them for Peter and Mary. Wee, yells Peter. He races round and round. Mary makes little twinkling circles in the air. Down by the river, they see rockets fall in a shower of stars. At last it's all over and Mary and Peter get in the car and lay their heads on the picnic backs. They are tired and full of marshmallows and soon they are fast asleep. And that is the story of Mary and Peter on July the 4th. And now I want to read you something very special. And this is entitled, 
I am an American. I am an American, and if you ask me what that means, I'll answer. I love my country and my God. I love my parents, and they love me. I respect my neighbors and deal with them fairly. I am strong. I am happy. I am free. I can speak without fear and act without shame and walk tall among the children of earth. All the rights that I have, I am willing to share. I am proud of my nation, my birth. I can work as I wish and play as I wish and think what I wish and say what I wish and do as I wish and pray as I wish so long as I'm decent and true. So school is free. My church is free. My country's laws are made for me. And all in all, it is good to be an American. I am glad that I'm an American. I am proud of my birthright. I'm humble too. And being an American, these things I must do. I must speak the truth as I see the truth. I must play by rules that are fair. I must not laugh at others another's way or take more than is my share. I must do all, I must do no thing that will cause me shame. I must walk tall and brave and free, and I must help others to have the rights that mean so much to me. And that is the poem, I Am an American. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read Celebrate America. Let's celebrate America, where eagles fly high, and liberty's torch lights the night sky. We hear the bells of freedom ring, and bands accompany the anthems we sing, the land of freedom and the home of the brave. All through the night, the flag still waves, with blessings from heaven above. We celebrate the land we love, and here we have the beautiful fireworks on the 4th of July. Yes, let's celebrate America. Boys and girls, I see I have time enough to remind you to be very thankful this July the 4th for all the freedom and wonderful country we have, and also to be sure and Put your flag up, a very special day to honor our flag, and to remember the Statue of Liberty that is showing that our country is free. And now, I want to tell you that the Tell a Story Time, WCTI-TV 12, the libraries of the regional system, we all wish you a very happy 4th of July. And so I'll see you next week. Until then, this is Eleanor Hawkins saying bye-bye for Tell a Story Time.